Pretty much everyone's spending more time at home these days. Maybe that means catching up on your favorite podcasts or doing more cooking and baking. If your winter could use some spicing up, Stop and Shop has ideas that might surprise you, like adding crispy, savory baked kale to popcorn, or chocolate chip banana bread in the shape of bite-sized muffins, or super easy-to-make chicken soup. Visit StopAndShop.com for inspiration and order for delivery right to your doorstep. Spice up your winter with Stop and Shop. You are listening to New Theory Radio. Hello and welcome to New Theory Radio, the show where we theorize on arts and pop culture. My name is Nav Dan Point. I am your host. And this is the show where this week we are celebrating International Women's Day. So International Women's Day is Monday, March 8th. And it's a time where we celebrate the various achievements of women around the world. This year's theme is hashtag choose to challenge, which is meant to challenge gender bias and inequality. Even in 2021, we need to stay reminded about the ways in which we can all do a better job at ensuring equal opportunities across the board. On today's NTR, we celebrate IWD with a special panel consisting of women who've really pushed forward when it comes to the work that they do in their respective industries and uh, who have also created their own opportunities while also creating opportunities for the people around them. So let me introduce my panelists, and I've written all of these intros uh, for each of you because I know each of you very well. So the first person I'm going to introduce, she is a creative entrepreneur that took the city of Toronto by storm last year with her socially distant wedding venue, which I might add, she came up with before the pandemic. Love Shack Tio is her brainchild and is slated to have an even bigger year this year. And she's no stranger to the show because I think I've had her on a bunch of times, more times than I can count. Pleased to welcome Natalie Ballantyne back here on New Theory Radio. Natalie, what's going on? My favorite place to be. I know. This is like your second home now. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for making the time. Second, she is an actress, TV personality, and host for Yes TV. She's also a director. Her short film 2020 was recently a selection for this year's Toronto Black Film Festival. And she's a member of the underground media conglomerate that we like to call the Summer Seven, which is an inside joke with yours truly. It is my good friend, Sharma McDonald. Sharma, thanks so much for fitting me in to your big media run that you're currently on. Oh my gosh. No worries, Nav. You know, just for you, just for you. Thanks so much for having <laughs> me. And yes, shout out to Summer Seven. It's Summer great. Seven. We're still out here. We're still out here. Yes. <laughs> Always. And last but not certainly least, she is the Cultural Development Manager for Visual Arts Mississauga, aka the person you need to know in the art scene for Peel if you want to make things happen. She is an art history aficionado, whether it's Bob Ross, Basquiat, or Banksy, she'll school you on it all. It is our good friend, as well as another NTR alumni, Eldiana Begovich. Eldiana, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Nav. I know it's always going to be a good time when you message me and ask me to come on. So no other yeah. no other way I want to spend my Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, we haven't hit the gray zone yet. So hopefully, uh, hopefully soon we can we can do this in person. But I do thank you for, for joining us. Um, so I, I just want to get right right to the very beginning. And obviously, I mentioned the theme off the top regarding uh, this year's International Women's Day and and the theme of choose to challenge. And I'd love to go around the table and get an idea of what this theme means to you or what the what the phrase choose to challenge means to you. Maybe Natalie, we'll begin with you. Um, I think that choose to challenge is also a good way to kind of pick your battles um, and pick them strategically. Everyone obviously is going to take that as their own within their own experience of what's important to them, what's important to fight for. And I think, especially in this world of like trolls, it's really negative online. You know, you have to really mean what you say and really stand 
for it and be about it, like talk the talk. So um, I think choose the challenge is, you know, something that you really believe in and you're really going for it and that you, you stand by what you're saying when you're challenging it. We're not, we're not about flip-flopping our opinions on um, what we're challenging. So I think for anyone uh, identifying as women, everyone has their own real deep rooted things that they're after. And if you wholeheartedly believe in it, that that's what you're challenging. Excellent. Excellent. Eldiana, what are your thoughts? I mean, to roll, like, I mean, I agree with Natalie. I also just think being authentically yourself and holding yourself accountable to the things that you're going to do um, and, and the, sort of the people around you, it always builds a better, stronger circle of people. And for you, I mean, you're only going to attract the same sort of energy. So it's hard because you want to, sometimes a lot of the things that you're confronted with um, as a woman, no matter in whatever industry is um, that part of your identity on top of everything else. That's kind of hard in the world to handle. So I think as long as you're doing it authentically, I think I can speak from personal experience. It's like every opportunity and every conversation and every relationship you come across is always going to come out um, better for it. So holding yourself accountable and holding yourself authentic. Amazing. Amazing. And Sharma, we have to ask you about your thoughts on the theme of choose to challenge. Yeah, no, I think it's a great theme. And yes, I agree with um, both of these ladies in that. um, Well, for me, personally, as soon as I hear that, I just think about, you know, as as a woman, and you know me, I just usually, I often still find myself second guessing myself. And I just kind of feel like, you know, when it says choose to challenge, it's like, no, you know what? Um, I feel strongly about this. I feel strongly about this decision. So I'm going to literally choose to challenge it. You know what I mean? Or I'm trying to still put my best foot forward with it. So for me, that's what uh, that whole uh, phrase and uh, that theme represents. Just being authentic, as was said, and uh, just, you know, staying true to yourself and you know, trying to, whatever you think, don't, don't second guess yourself all the time. Cause I made that mistake. So, yeah. Well, tell me more because like the next question I have is, um, what does this idea of bias and inequality look in, in the industry that you play in, which as recently has been the film industry? Um, how, how have you sort of encountered some of these challenges? Oh yeah. Um, all the time. I mean, it's gotten a little better over time and and that's just because of, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, light has been shed on, uh, just females in the industry. And of course we had the Me Too movement and, you know, we just have a lot of, um, uh, great networks uh, of women coming together in the industry. Uh, but for me, it's a lot of, and in the industry, they say, okay, you're an actress. You're playing this, you know, damsel in distress. That's all you can do kind of thing. Um, if I want like a badass role, then it's like, oh, wait, you know, let's, uh, you know, back up a sec. Is that something that uh, you can do or, you know? So I also think of myself as uh, I am a writer. And lately I've been getting into more filmmaking, which includes cinematography, Right. And so I have a lot of men that want to challenge like, oh, well, do you know what you're doing with a camera? Do you know how to handle that? Uh, You know, and even in directing, it's also if I want to cast a male actor, then it's kind of, you know, you can kind of tell that there's that, oh, she's going to be telling me what to do (laughs) or, you know. And so I feel like in my industry, there's still a lot of growth that uh, needs to be done and needs to be made. Um, But there's definitely been some progress. The only thing is, as a woman, I kind of expect, you know, and I anticipate that hesitation in my abilities from my male counterparts in the industry. So 
there's definitely still that bias, you know, with like equal pay and stuff as well. So, um, and age is a factor too, you know, men, uh, male actors, they're like, you know, as they get in age, you know, they're like fine wine and they, you know, can even get more money with women. We get to a certain age and it's like, oh, you know, she's, <laughs> she's shriveled up. Okay. You know, meanwhile, she's only like, you know, late forties or fifties, but you know, it's like a career ender. So there's just so much that goes on still in the industry, but yeah, it's, it's quite, it. it's very interesting that you bring that up because I, I think a lot of people assume that progress is being made, but it, it feels still feels like there's so, so much more that needs to be done. Like for every step of progress that's, that's made it, for example, in the film industry, the TV industry, there's always two steps back that get taken because someone has to bring an ideal forward. And and I'm curious, uh, El Diano, uh, how, how, how similar is that when it comes to the visual arts world? Have you seen similar things that Sharma had just mentioned? I think, um, I mean, it seems to be a little bit everywhere. The art world is notorious. I mean, if you look up the Gorilla Girls, they did a whole, um, whole pieces of artwork around the idea that most spaces like galleries, museums don't have women artists represented. That's kind of been the oldest story in the game. Um, which is always interesting to me because it's a woman don- dominated industry right now. Like I work with a lot of women and women are sort of managing and holding the arts community together, especially during a pandemic. Um, so it's always interesting to me that if I go to a show or someone's getting representation, it's often times um, men artists or older men kind of run the game and it's interesting because that's not who I see on a regular basis and that's definitely not the like the behind the scenes the person who's running the show especially because the arts always gets um this like lens as as being like a hobby (laughs) or you know a woman's hobby on the side of like real work um and it's interesting because so much of what we do and i I mean if you speak to any artist any artist here specifically um you'll know like there's a business side to being able to be a creative and to have sort of like that hustle mentality and so i mean i always think of myself as a business person so it's always interesting to hear um a lot of passive comments about women making art as a hobby (laughs) or you know what I mean and then and then not getting the credit at the end of the day for some of those like really top top jobs those CEO jobs those head curator jobs um and those really like block those blockbuster shows I mean if you if you could tell me five artists right now um I owe you a drink that are that are women. If you can give me five women artists <laughs> off the top of your head, um, it, it would be amazing because I they don't get talked enough about and they don't get represented enough. So it seems to be a problem everywhere, and unfortunately, it's in the arts too. So wow, wow, Natalie. I know you and I have had some conversations during your time with Love Shack last year regarding some of the run-ins that you had that are somewhat similar to, to the themes that both Sharma and Eldiana mentioned, uh, give, give me a sense of how you've been able to navigate that. Yeah, I think um, just like as reference, as we opened up our own space, a pretty predominant club owner who is male in Toronto came after us legally as soon as we started to open because we had a similar, we had the word love in our name. Um, and he didn't like that. So like his immediate action was to aggressively message me on Instagram, um, and threatening a lawsuit. And it's just, again, like that male mentality of like, we run this, we run this block. This is our block. Don't bother trying to get in. And it's like, this is not your block. (laughs) Um, we don't have a similar business whatsoever. Um, and the reality is obviously I was intimidated. I'm not I'm not going to dismiss that. I I was intimidated when it happened. And I think that 
it's a, it's a very, very normal feeling for someone to say, oh, you're, you're getting into my lane, especially as a male who's used to just being like, you're in my lane, please move. Um, and you know, I had to be like, I will not move just because you don't like that. I'm standing in your lane. Um, because it's actually not your lane. (laughs) We don't have anything that's, that's really going on. That's the same. So it was a scary thing that happened and it lasted like a 24 hour meltdown for me to like get through all the motions that I had to, um, to get to the next day. But I think that like the bullying aspect of like, I will just take my place and tell you how it is and where to go from here. And you have to, as a woman, um, immediately just know to push back, right? Again, like choose your challenge. I had to choose to challenge back, even though it was uncomfortable, even though I was really scared. Um, and another thing I did just want to mention in, in that whole thing too, is like, it's very easy also to kind of pin women against each other, um, in arts, in, in every, in ad agency, in innovation in science, right. It's, that's kind of one of the moves as well as I definitely agree that it's so interesting that behind the scenes in music, when I worked in music festivals, when I work at an ad agency, an influencer, it is predominantly women. And then the credit happening is like male for like this one guy up here. Who's like, Oh yeah, this is my idea. And all of us down here are like, hell no, it wasn't actually. Um, but it's, it's interesting to then use those women against each other to keep their status and, you know, keep up, keep everyone in their own kind of lane. I don't know why I keep saying that, but um, I definitely think it's an interesting conversation of, yes, you have to fight back and you cannot, you have to, you ha- women and women have to support each other. Men have to help getting into the conversation as well uh, so that you're not having that kind of pinned against you. You are listening to New Theory Radio. You are listening to New Theory Radio. Allies are, are so important. I, mean, I think that's been one of the key things that I've definitely noticed, even as Sharma, as you mentioned, the Me Too movement from, from a few years ago. It looks like now more so than ever allies to open up these spaces or even stick up for people or stick up for women who are dealing with this type of harassment is so crucial nowadays just to just to even um, ensure that opportunities are, are being distributed equally and no one's being treated unfairly. Um, Sharma, I'm curious that as you were going through the, the work behind your short film 2020, were there any sort of male allies or, or, or was there anyone or other female directors that you were going to, to, to help some of the situations that you were dealing with at the time? Yeah. So, um, so my short film 2020, it's uh, primarily based on um, just what I was going through in the year 2020 and uh, just racing COVID-19 intersecting. Uh, so it was through my eyes as a black psychologist, um, my character as a black psychologist, but my director and uh, my film partner, he is male. Uh, his name's AP Kunzi. Uh, shout out AP. Um, but he, him and I, we have a good working relationship. And so I can at least say, although there aren't, you know, as many male uh industry um, film partners that um, I would trust. Uh, And when I say trust, just that I would feel, you know, comfortable with and sharing my ideas, my views. Uh, I definitely did trust him. Um, And so we have a good partnership and he was very uh, supportive in um, my writing, my writing skills. And um, 
yeah, I even got to do some, you know, cinema, <clears throat> sorry, cinematography and shooting some of his shots. And, and so like, we really had a good partnership. So what I really liked was that he brought the male perspective of it into the film and I brought the female perspective. So it was like a joint creation that way. And um, yeah, so we had, you know, nothing but positive experience. Yes, of course, we butt heads <laughs> naturally um, at times, but, you know, it, it was just uh, great creatively. So I'm glad we had each other. Yeah. No, no, that's not, that's great. That's great. And yeah, shouts AP for for helping you out and for bringing 2020 to life because it yes. looks like a really awesome film. Um, Eldiana, I'm curious from a visual arts Mississauga standpoint, how have you gone about ensuring that the opportunity that, that the opportunities that are provided with VAM are equally distributed or are not skewed to to one gender over the other? Um, I mean, we, it's hard because I think just by the nature of being in a creative space, you're going to get, um, a little bit of everyone, to be honest. So the idea is that there's no way of truly creating anything great without some sort of collaboration. And I think that comes intrinsically no matter how you identify. Um, and so I've had the privilege of working with some really great men and women. Um, case in point, I, I managed like a residency and how heavily um, female dominated the arts can be. I've had in my last cohorts only women um, as, as applicants who've gotten accepted. Um, and now we have, you know, a better mix in the group and it's an interesting dynamic because you want to make sure that there's support on both sides and it creates a really great um, conversation because the experiences are so very different and the work that artists make um, are really really different you know like a man's experience creating art and being an artist I think is really different than how a woman um, experiences being an artist. So just watching that conversation between artists has been like a privilege for me. Um, and on, it just, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. It just, the best part about being in the arts is just having a little bit of everyone. And like Sharma said, it's the more perspectives, it just, you know, you're going to come out with a better um, product at the end. So it's always been beneficial. And I'm I'm never going to close the door to anybody who wants to like be vulnerable and like make art. So it doesn't matter. Come on in. We'll get, we'll get collaborating. Yeah. A little bit of a plug for Van. Obviously we got to squeeze that in. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Take courses. <laughs> yeah. But it, it is evident, especially in the work that I see Van come out with like it never you know it doesn't feel like the good old boys club like there's always a diverse set of artists from different backgrounds different genders that just come together and and are able to put together some amazing work and, and, I, and I think this really really came to the forefront during the me too movement which which sent a ripple not just within the entertainment industry but in every industry and um you know you could draw parallels to even the racial uprising from last year and the ripple that's creating right now and in, in across many industries. But, but w w like, and I'm curious if we can, you know, Natalie, we'll start with you, but I'd love to get Eldiana and, and Sharma to provide their, their thoughts as well Is why is it that we, we preach uh, equality all the time, but there's still this struggle. Like what, why, why can't we fully embrace it? And, I, and I'd love to get your, your thoughts on that, Natalie, to, to begin with. Well, first of all, there's not enough women at the top to actually make the hard, like this, this to make the say, like, yes, we're all fighting for something in that realm. Um, but we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep saying it because until it's the women in the position to say, this is the actual policy change. This is what we do at HR now. This is what we do. Um, what, what else, you know, like there's, there's no action with any of it. So the equality conversation can't stop because the people at the top 
don't feel affected the same way. Right. And it, it normally comes down to that. Like my experience is not similar to your experience. I don't understand it. So I can't see why it's such a big deal. And until there's someone in a position that's a little bit higher that feels that doesn't have to be the exact same experience, but has something similar to say, no, this is why we need a new policy. This is why we need a new uh, pay structure. This is why we need a different hiring um, procedure. So we get more women applicants through our funnel. Uh, There's not enough of us at the top. Like we said, we're all, we're all there. We're behind the scenes. We're making it all happen. But there just needs to be a little bit more power at the top so that those choices and changes can be made. As one thing. It's a great point you bring up. Well, but it's a great point that you bring up because I think a lot of people expect this change to be driven by people at lower levels, right? Maybe because they feel that they're more ambitious, have more time, even though they're probably working nonstop. But they there's always this expectation of, hey, let's start a subcommittee and they'll just do it. And then we can we can take credit for it after if something good comes out of it. Like that's been my experience when I've seen these things try to come into play in big companies. I don't know, Sharma or Eldiana, how, how do you feel about that? Maybe Eldiana, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Natalie. It really comes to the fact that if women aren't sitting in change, policy change seats or powerful positions where they can make those changes, then it's not going to happen. And I think, I think that conversation is also starting to get stale because I think just good leadership looks at everyone included and makes those changes regardless of their own past experience or policies that sort of preceded them. So I think it takes, again, it comes back to accountability. It really is about holding who's in power accountable to follow through and make those changes happen. Um, Because like, You know, you don't have to have a daughter or a wife um, or be a woman to understand why having an empowered staff or team or group of people behind you is going to ultimately make for better results. So I think, yeah, it just comes down to it would be a lot easier. And I think the pandemic has been... um, a testament to that. Like you look at some of the countries in the world who've had the best outcomes, you know, rolling out procedures and, you know, they all have women at the top. So I think like now that we've all kind of survived this year, I don't know what the excuse is anymore, <laughs> you know? So yeah, more, shout more to like, New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sharma, what about you? You know, the entertainment industry is, it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one to navigate. But but what's your what's your take? Yeah, absolutely. Just like uh, you know, Natalie um, hit the nail on the head, and just like Eldiana was saying, um, it's it's all at the top. Like it depends on who is at the highest level right now, who's making those key decisions, right? And you know, it's still a lot of men. It's a male dominated um, industry. A lot of the industries are right. And so I think that's where the problem is. And, you know, we can keep talking until we're blue in the face. Right. But the bottom line is, and, and that's something that I've realized within the past couple of years that it really does start at the top. And it's not even like an industry thing. It's like, it, you know, even your day to day life, um, you know, and other, any industry that you're, um, you know, interacting with, you realize how much, how very little say, um, the people at the, you know, let's say quote unquote bottom have, and it's, you know, and it's just, it's, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. And that's why for me, I, um, as an actor, you realize that, (laughs) A lot of your um, day-to-day decisions, your day-to-day life, a lot of what you do is depending on somebody else. Like somebody's making the decision for you. You know what I mean? Like somebody is, you know, saying, okay, you're in for this audition. Like, you know, yeah, you're good enough for this or whatever the case is. And so I was kind of tired 
of, you know, living that all the time, uh, especially when I wasn't getting, you know, certain opportunities as a woman and, and a woman of color, right? And so then I took it upon myself to kind of lead my own path as well. So, and through that, I've been giving other people a chance. So that's how I learn, you know, firsthand, it, it starts at the top. Yeah, I know that's that's a great example, a great example of just taking ownership and and creating opportunities, not just for yourself, for people around you. And I think all three of you have have really done a fantastic job in doing that in your in your specific areas. Um, what what keeps you going to 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 stay motivated and to stay pushing through? Because sometimes I'm sure there's there's moments where it can be very draining and and demotivating. Sharma. Yeah, sure. I know. I was like, okay. Like, um, you know, just, just this, like, honestly, um, you know, panels like this as well, where I do get to connect with fellow artists, you know, in, in any capacity, I really value that. I appreciate that. Even when people reach out to me, um, or I'm reaching out to them, I just love fellowship, especially between artists, because I feel like as artists, um, we're kind of underappreciated uh, in terms of what we contribute to society, right? And, um, you know, any entrepreneurs, uh, you know, anyone in the creative realm, I have such appreciation because it's hard. It's a hard, you know, hard uh, walk. Um, so, yeah, just uh, motivating. I get my motivation from well, a lot of audiobooks as well. Um, but you know, just hanging out and, and talking and having discussion with like-minded people and uh keeping up to date with what's going on in the world and stories that I feel need to be told. So yeah, that's what keeps me keeps me going. Excellent. Natalie, what about you? What keep what, what's kept you going throughout your entire journey? Well, just that there's there are so many other amazing women really fighting the good fight and just like rocking amazing businesses, coming out with great ideas, paving their own path. Um, I think it's just motivating to see other people uh, owning what they're really good at, being really good at something. You know, I always admire, this is like a far-fetched example, but I really do admire people who are like really on stage. Like if you, when you go to a concert and you see someone like really in their power, like this is what I'm good at and this is what I love to do. Um, that's motivating in, in so many different ways. So like watching women, you know, I'll use uh, Whitney Hurd uh, from Bumble, you know, like getting Bumble to IPO and even friends that I know in Toronto, like um, CEOs at Juno, um, Heather Payne, Willful, Amber Bloom, Avery Francis, you know, like there are so many powerful women just owning their story and going for it. And so I just, I really admire that. Amazing. Amazing. Now, Deanna. Yeah. I mean, I think the more motivated I get is when I sort of immerse myself in my community and I'm doing like really good work with people I care for. And I see the benefits of that work, um, you know, roll out for them. And it just makes me want to keep doing it. You know, I don't, it, whether or not it's just like community events or, um, projects that just pay people the way they should be paid for their work. I ultimately like that's, I'm just going to keep doing that. I, I love being a connector and, um, it gives me an energy like nothing else. So as long as I see powerful women doing good work, I'm, I will do anything to keep in that energy. You are listening to new theory radio. You are listening to New Theory Radio. And 
Just one that sort of comes to mind with the theme, choose to challenge. Is there is there someone in particular that you, I know Natalie, you named off a few awesome women, but is there like someone in particular that you think embodies this theme that, that you, that when you hear choose to challenge, you, you think about right away, like this person, this woman is challenging inequality and gender bias. And Natalie, I hate to put you on the spot, but let me know what you think. Well, there are, I mean, yeah, there's, there's tons of different examples. I guess it just depends on like what's in your echo chamber for who you think is awesome and in terms of what they're doing. But yeah, I I will, I will definitely say like, obviously Avery, um, you know, using her own story of sexual assault in the workplace has really turned out to empower a lot of people to support her business and make, allow her to create strategic um, diversity inclusion programs for different workplaces. Um, and again, I would say like even Sophia Amoroso from Nasty Gal, like she's just had to pivot her business many times. Now she's doing courses on how to be an entrepreneur after like going bankrupt with Nasty Gal. Um, so I think there are really local um, Chief Ladybird, who's an artist as well, you know, definitely using like her art in order to keep an d- indigenous storytelling alive. I think there's just, there's so many people who are like, living their truth and telling their story. And that's, that is the only thing you can really ask of people. Excellent. Excellent. Sharma, what about you? Who, who in your eyes epitomizes the hashtag choose to challenge? Yeah. So um, I immediately think of, and I'm keeping this on a yeah, local level, a friend of mine, uh, her name is Mary Emma Torre. And we worked together recently on, um, she, she, runs an organization called Women of Impact Organization. And so I had worked with them and done some uh, BP uh, communication stuff with them for the past uh, year. And what that organization does is just uh, partners uh, communities in uh, Guinea in particular in West Africa and uh, uh, communities here and just really tries to motivate Um, and teach young girls and provide them with school supplies and target early school leaving. Um, So early, you know, because then a lot of these young girls, they're going to school for an education, but they're pulled out of school because then, you know, domestic work has to be done, right? Or they end up working at home. And, um, And so then they end up not being able to continue with their education compared to, you know, boys uh, of their, you know, male counterparts. And so that to me really struck a chord. And so this is something that she's been pushing uh, for a while, just really trying to open up educational um, centers there and really preaching the importance in that community of the worth of girls, you know what I mean? And we talk about women, but we cannot, you know, leave out that there are, you know, young girls that are so disadvantaged, right? And so we are so fortunate here in Canada, right? But on so many other parts of the world, there are, you know, little girls that, you know, aren't even allowed to open up a book, right? And stuff like that is just, is ridiculous. And, you know, in human and trafficking, and it's just, you know, and this is what International Women's Day is about, yes, it's about celebrating each other, but it's also about bringing those situations to light and understanding that in some parts of the world, it, it's it's very tough, you know, being um, a young girl on so many levels. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'd like to like, you know, lift her up. That's immediately who I thought of, so. Excellent, excellent. No, shout outs to her, especially. And Aldiana, what about you? Who in your eyes really epitomizes uh, someone who's chosen to challenge? Uh, for me, it always goes to, it's either side of the spectrum. So it's people I've either never met and probably will never meet, or it's people who I'm working with every day. I think about all the artists across the board who've like been told that they're not essential in this last year and like pushed through and persevered to keep making good work and connecting with their community and like using their artwork. Um, Shelly Zhang is one, she's Toronto based. 
um, doing amazing work for her community and, um, you know, talking about um, racism in the Asian community in the last year. Um, just seeing people keep making work and sort of protect and empower their communities has been inspiring for me. It's why I do what I do. And I just, I keep learning from them. And as long as I'm learning from them, I'm, I'm grateful. So all of those people on a community level and like my business partner, Amanda Folds, who I talk to all day, um, we just keep connected. And that's like a really powerful woman. Um, and I'm really grateful for her. Shout out Amanda. And like back to New Zealand, Jacinda Arden is sort of like, anytime I turn on the news, I want to just scream because of everything that's going on in the world. But then I see leaders like Jacinda Arden, and I know we're all going to be okay. So amazing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. She's I, definitely been someone that we've all sort of looked at as being just an example of strength and, and power during this time. Now that you were going to say, I just wanted to also point out like throughout all of, I mean, we need art and we need um, entertainment and we need creativity all the time, but just like throughout pandemic, you know, most people have turned to wanting to read more books, wanting to get yeah. you know, really into binge watching everything on Netflix, um, wanting to learn how to draw or paint and music. And those have been the real core key things that have gotten people through a really hard time. And so I think it's really important to remember um, that everyone who's involved in the arts, it's, it's such a crucial thing for humans to feel connected to something during a hard time, during the good times, you know, like the art is what's keeping us all kind of going, whatever it is, photography, drawing, music, whatever. Netflix is still art. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's so interesting that it always, arts kind of gets put on a different level than everything else. Whereas that's what we've all needed. That's what we need. That's what we needed this whole year. Shout out yeah, to it's, it's certainly, <laughs> yeah, it's certainly been everyone's like outlet right now, whether it's enjoying it or creating it, right? So, no, I think that's a, a solid point that you bring up. Shouts to Jasmine Sullivan and her amazing album. Uh, <laughs> what what's your hope for the future, uh, especially as we as we reflect on International Women's Day this year, and as, as well as the fact that this month is Women's History Month. Um, what is your hope moving forward? And, and Natalie, we'll begin with you. I think that my hope is that just more and more and more and more, you just keep seeing women show up, hear their stories and get their money. You know, I just, I really want women to get their bag, fill their bank accounts, be happy, be joyful in uh, what their passions are, whether it's family, business, both. But I think that my, my hope is to continue seeing more and more women as the spokesperson in front of the camera, um, as, as, as the people telling their stories. I guess. Excellent. Excellent. Aldiana. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I'm hoping that the world overall takes a hint from like sort of the soft strength that women have and all of the features of empathy and compassion that we've all needed more than ever in the last year and sort of just take those and understand that they make for really good qualities for leadership um, and that, you know, we appreciate those skills um, in people and hopefully we come out with a better planet um, than sort of what we left behind pre-COVID, so. Excellent, excellent, and Sharma? Yeah, I would definitely say it comes down to allyship. I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of men, just like what you're doing today now of having us on and, and you know, drawing attention to this, um, you know, I think like a lot of men also need to, you know, step up and, and recognize uh, women that are doing, you know, great things in their, in their industry and, you know, not having a problem <laughs> when a woman's promoted or, you know, putting forth a, a woman's name to be promoted, you know? So um, I think that's what I would 
of wines uh, going forward, because I really think that's part of what's going to make a difference. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And I must add, all of my favorite bosses, mentors, leaders have all been women just for all the reasons that all three of you have mentioned, because again, there's, there's a certain style there that, that can work in multiple situations. And I've learned a lot and, and it's something that I continue to strive being better at when it comes to being a better ally. So, um, yeah, just grateful for all three of you <clears throat> for number one, being good friends of mine, but number two, for, you know, sharing and, and being honest on today's conversation, because again, exactly like what I said before, I think we're, I think there's change is something that we want to do, but I think more of us need to, um, really continually push that forward and remind people why this is important and why we need to see more equality and erase the inequality that currently exists in our world today. Um, well, I wanted to thank all three of you for joining us. This has been a fantastic conversation. This is the opportunity to plug whatever you have going on or, or give a shout to your social feed or say whatever you like. And Sharma, we'll begin with you. Let us know how the, uh, how the listeners can, uh, can learn more about not only you, but your new film. Yeah, sure. So, uh, again, uh, the short film is called 2020 and we have an Instagram page where you can follow our film's journey and you'll find out, uh, where it's playing next. Um, so the handle is at 2020 motion picture and, uh, and 2020 the numbers. So 2020 motion picture. Uh, and uh, you can check me out on my Instagram page, Sharma McDonald. So uh, just make sure it's M-A-C. Um, and uh, yeah, also on Facebook, Sharma McDonald, everywhere, Sharma McDonald. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just when you ever you can uh, check out uh, the film, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, normally I know a lot of people want to forget about 2020, but don't forget about no, it. Please. Not in this, in this case, please don't. please don't. Yeah, please don't it's forget about it. Go, go support. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably a, a lighter spot of, for the year 2020 than the year that we just had. But again, continue supporting local filmmakers like Sharma because, hey, we need to create more opportunities here locally as well. Natalie, what about you? Um, if you are looking to get married this year, in an intimate way, we provide alternative spaces for intimate celebrations at Love Shack Toronto. That's it. Love Shack Toronto everywhere. Wow. No, no personal shout outs, no personal accounts. Are you still private? Yeah, man. <laughs> my, my Twitter. You can get you can get my Twitter, Natalie B. <laughs> Natalie B. Sounds like a rapper's name. And last but not least, let's talk to LDNA B. Um, that's, uh, yeah. So at LD Begovich is my Twitter for me personally, but I'm private too on Instagram. So I totally get it, Natalie. Um, but I'm a co-founder for You Made It Peel, which spotlights local creatives, especially in this last year and social entrepreneurs who are trying to network and showcase their stuff. And as you know, Nav, platforms are sort of dwindling in peel so we're hoping to sort of amplify some creatives on there so that's at you underscore made it underscore it peel that's on instagram and at presence mississauga i'm working on a really big project with the city of mississauga um working with bipoc young artists in mississauga over the course of a year doing workshops and exhibitions and events and i'm really excited so follow them it's a great team at presence mississauga excellent, excellent. they told me to plug all of that <laughs> <laughs> please do you can plug all that you want here on new theory radio and we will and we will provide all the details that all three of you mentioned uh, within our podcast description as well as our social media as well. But again, thank you all three of you for coming on the show. Happy International Women's Day and continue to rock because we need all three of you. We need we need to continue supporting our women. They, they truly make the world go around. So, yeah. so please do your part and, and make that happen. And uh, that's a wrap for today's show. If you want to connect with New Theory Radio, it is at New Theory Radio across all of our social platforms. If you want to connect with me, it is at NavNanwa on Instagram and Twitter. 
Big shout outs to my little brother, Amit Nanwa, aka at colorblind photography underscore on Instagram. He is the individual behind all of our social videos online. Go send him a follow. As well, special thanks to Dusty Loops. He is the producer behind our theme song. Go send him a follow at Dusty Loops across all social platforms. Thanks again for tuning in, and you will hear all of us next time. Peace. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law.